Hello and welcome back to another episode of Tash Teaches. I'm Tash, and in today's video I'd like to show you how you can use MIDI channels to separate individual notes within one clip onto multiple instruments on the same track. So without further ado, let's jump right in and I'm going to show you what I'm talking about. I've put in a little 4-4 kick and a simple chord progression here. And what I'd like to do is to generate a little bit more interest in that chord progression. And what I'm thinking is I'd like for every note in these chords to be playing on a different instrument, or if not every single one on a different instrument, break this chord up onto a variety of instruments so that then we can modulate those different instruments separately to sort of create some rhythm within the difference between the modulation, if that makes sense. So it'd be quite nice to have, say, a triplet feel filter opening on these low notes, and then maybe a 16th note saw wave opening the resonance in these notes and maybe this top one it would be nice to have an LFO just slowly opening and closing the filter there but I want to be able to affect all of these notes separately but on this one channel. Now in a similar kind of way to using the instrument selector and then putting it on round robin or one of the other options we're going to be doing something that allows us to put multiple instruments on one channel and using one bit of MIDI clip trigger those uh, instruments. And the way that we're going to do that is, instead of using a selector, we're going to use a layer here. Because what we want is for every single one to play at the same time. If we were to put it in a selector, um, unless we choose a different selecting mode, we're not really going to be shifting between them. So, currently I've just got one instance of this instrument layer in here. So, nice. If I were to duplicate this, it's going to get a lot louder. And that's just because we have two instances of the same thing. But what I want to do is change this second one a little bit. So maybe let's make this into a square wave. So now we have this one and this one. Why don't we add another one as well and we'll do sort of a double saw. So we'll pop that up there. I don't know if we're going to have... So we've got a good good difference here, but I think maybe this, this top saw wave, I'm going to add a little bit of unison just to further make it stand apart from that square wave. Nice, so those are three slightly different sounds, but how are we going to pick which notes play on which instrument? Well, we're going to be using the MIDI channels for the notes, and you may or may not have noticed, but when you highlight notes in the inspector, you have over here the option to choose which channel they're sent to. And depending on what mode you choose the note colours to be selected as, currently it's clip, so all of the notes are blue because the clip is blue, but if you put this on note channel, you can basically pick and then see which notes are being sent to which channel. So let's put that to number three. Currently we've got channel two down here, we've got channel one, and then channel three. Let's make uh, one more instrument as well. Let's put these on channel four. And let's make one more instance up here. I'm gonna call this uh, one, two, three, and Four. Bearing in mind again, if we press play, it's now playing on all four still, and we don't necessarily want that. Let's make this last one a blend of a square wave and a double saw wave. So let's see what that's like. This needs to be changed a little bit, so maybe let's make it... Okay, that's sort of different enough. Cool. So what we're now going to do is we're going to tell this instrument layer that for each of these instruments, they should be focusing on a different MIDI channel. And the way that we do that is by using the channel filter. And you've got to make sure you add it before because this is a note, uh, a note effects. And we're going to take the channel filter. And by default, your channel filter will look like this. All of these lights will be on. And I've just set it so that by default, mine, all of them are off. Because it saves me having to click 11 times as opposed to 1. So I'm going to say on this first instrument, I only want to be listening for notes on channel one. So if I put this on and I mute these other instances now, and we listen, only these red notes, the G and the D, these are going to come through. So let's listen. And whichever notes I then add in, so if I choose these last two to also go to channel one, you'll see that I can very easily decide which goes where.
And of course, if I now go to the next layer, and let's add a filter, a channel filter, should I say, and let's choose just the notes from number two. So let's listen to this one now. Two seems to be the bass, and that's actually quite handy because that, that square wave sounds great. So let's call this bass, and we'll call this uh, one, two, and three. We'll call that uh, two, whatever. Um, so we, we can very easily then decide within one clip what's happening with the bass line here. So if I were to draw in another note and make it the, or if I just copy and paste one of these guys, I can in fact move a note up just as high. So we could go, let's do a, a G there. I can now draw in notes and it won't, it won't interfere with this other stuff. I, I can even draw notes on the same, on the same place. Um, cool. So now let's just choose our number two. Let's pop that on. Let's see what it sounds like with the two chords. We just need to add channel filter for in number three now. And uh, how many colors do we have? We've got yellow, red, and green. Yellow, red, green, and orange. Um, okay, nice. So we just need to choose for this one to do channel filter for number four. And let's turn off these mutes and you'll see that we now have the individual sounds. And if we go over to here, we can even see them a bit easier. And unlike using the instrument selector, because we have such direct control over the individual elements, it's a lot easier to then sort of use just one MIDI channel, but make this wonderful breathing concept. And of course, this now means as well that we can add in, say, an arpeggiator on one of these channels. So let's take this, this top one. Let's add the arpeggiator then after here. We can add maybe uh, an octave change. Quite cool. Maybe we want to change the envelopes on some of these. So currently we, the, the sound may be different, but the actual envelopes all sounds the same. So let's add a bit more release on this top layer. And of course we now have absolute control over shaping all of these sections. So let's look at the bass. And let's think, what can we do that will separate that from the other sounds? Let's take maybe a steps module. And we'll do uh, for it to only advance when there's a note. So this means that we can sort of just create something interesting here. And static values will change. So let's do something with the filter. And if we make this an odd amount of steps, let's go for say 13 or, or something like that. That will mean that it's constantly evolving. Okay, nice. Let's, let's change this a little bit more. Let's do another one of these bad boys at a different length as well. Let's do 11 here and let's uh, dice it a bit and do something with the resonance perhaps. Cool. Let's also just add a random and we're going to make it so that the random does a, uh, gives us a random value every time there's a note as well. So this will be quite a nice way of just adding a little bit of a uh, variation between the decay lengths here. So let's make it bipolar. Let's do it on both of these guys. We could also then make this lower one mono because this is a bass section. Can add a bit of glide. Let's listen to it in context. Now that top bit just sounds awful to me. So in fact, I'm going to go in here and I'm also going to take a note length. And this will basically mean that it doesn't care. Um, where, where are we? Let's go for note latch, actually. That will basically just mean that the note stays held, even though we're getting shorter notes here. And let's put, for example, I wonder what key we're in. Let's have a look here. Uh, got an F sharp. I guess this is, it's like, C, it would be C Lydian. And let's, let's just choose C Lydian for now. Um, so let's put after this arpeggiator, a diatonic transposer. 
Let's pop that in C Lydian. And now we can introduce a bit of just random, random stuff here. See what happens. Let's make this three steps. Let's change this mode. be quite nice if we added some sort of situation quite like we had before where every one of these notes is triggering a different oh let's make these bipolar be nice to smooth between these as well look at how beautiful that visualization is ooh Here's the chord one. Now I think this would be quite cool to have something really quite obvious in um, in what's happening, like it's very rhythmically fixed. So let's take this off free and do this to sync. So we'll at least be in time. Let's do something with the filter that's a bit wild. I mean, that's just pretty cool, I have to say, because we are now defining all of these different parts separately. I'm going to bring the pitch down on here, because it seems a bit unnecessary to have. Just a bit of glide on that as well. And let's go back to that chord section. It would be nice um, to put still a little bit more of that push through on the beginning of a new note. got that LFO, but let's add another one. Let's do this at 16th note. So we're doing 16 against. Turn that off bipolar. Make it sorry. Go back. Let's just undo everything I've just done before that point. Okay, that's quite nice. But anyway, that's a lovely little way of um, splitting things up. And, you know, you, you can come up with a simple chord progression and then on just one channel, split it into your separate sections. And say I didn't have this, uh, this, rhythmic, this rhythmic nature. If I get rid of any note um let's smooth you on yeah you're all right you're all right you're all right and so are you so let's uh make everything full length this is then cool where you can just sort of put in your chord progression and then through removing things with an arpeggiator so let's do like buh, buh, buh. let's do something like this And then we've got uh, another arpeggiator for the chord, but let's do chord mode, um, and let's do let's do a similar pattern. Let's do da -da. let's do this. Maybe make it. Let's add our diatonic transpose a C Lydian. Obviously, this means that we can add effects to the individual layers. So let's. What was this layer? I don't feel like we've done much with this one. Um, okay, let's take an arpeggiator and let's do some sort of. We'll go up a fifth and then we'll go up uh, 12. Um, in fact, what we'll do is we'll go like one, two, three. We'll do this then. So this one will be up a fifth, and then this one can be up an octave. Let's see what that sounds like. Let's 
let's get some sort of uh, motion going on in here as well. Um, in fact, it's quite nice doing that sharp like that. Let's do 16th note. Now that's quite cool. And let's do some sort of smooth motion here between the amount of filter. Do something as well that changes the attack. And we don't need that to be bipolar. Okay, in context. We can add a bit of reverb there. We'll probably bring one of these oscillators down. Anyways, that's how you use MIDI channels to separate MIDI on one channel into multiple channels. Well folks, that's sadly all we have time for today, but I do hope that this video has been useful. If you enjoyed it, please remember to like, comment and subscribe if you haven't already, making sure to smash that little notifications button if you'd like to keep up to date with all of my future videos, that is. In the meantime, happy Monday and happy creating.